So I've been a nurse for 25 years or so, and during uh, midlife, I decided to go back and study the humanities. I did a PhD in mythological studies with emphasis in depth psychology and studied the nurse archetype, the image, the role, the complexity. I wanted to see what is under the surface of the nurse. So what I discovered is the nurse image holds longing, ambivalence, fear, desire, and vulnerability. When you look at an archetype, it draws you in while repelling you at the same time. That's how you know you're in an archetype, drawing you in and repelling you. Nurses are typically seen as stereotypical images, which are just split off pieces. And each piece has something to say about the whole. The sex object, of course, um, if you think about it, a nurse tends a stranger's body. Also, nurses crave intensity, merging, and collaboration. They're not shy about the body. The sadistic side of the nurse we can see in these crazy fictional characters. And of course, nurses have to inject needles. They have to tie people down sometimes. They are a tiny bit obsessive compulsive to keep you safe and perfectionistic. So there is some truth to this crazy fictional idea. And then when we look at the archetype of being drawn in and repelled at the same time, we see this image here in Richard Prince's paintings, looking at sort of the virgin and the whore all together. She's pure and she's menacing. There's energy created by ambivalence, which is why an archetype is expansive. Then we have the angel. And of course, this is a projection that we place on the nurse because we don't want to possibly imagine her as incompetent. So she's a perfect angel. And also when we see the nun, we, we're reminded of our religious roots in nursing. Then we have the self-sacrificing heroine and we're reminded of our military roots. We've all have that in our background. Uh, Veronica Lake in this bottom picture here gave the ultimate sacrifice in her 1941 So Proudly We Hail film. The nurse here has no needs of her own. She's tending others. Then there's some truth to the handmaiden when we look at the 1930s, um, this film, Miss Evers Boys, and the silent and invisible nurse. And the ethics of the 1930s for nursing was basically obedience. And we see this historically. And we see the silent and invisible as both positive and dangerous. And then we look at the nurse as a disguise. And on some level, filmmakers must know that nurses are invisible because they use this disguise knowing that the character can sneak in and out without being seen. And it's also in mythologies, Demeter in, in Greek mythology uses a nurse as a disguise. The nurse in Romeo and Juliet may look frumpy, but she's playful, colorful. She revels in love and romance, and she plays the crucial role in moving the plot forward. She might look like a matron, but she's wild underneath, and this has mythic relevance as well. So how do we go deeper than these splits and these stereotypes, these repressions and distortions? Archetypal glimpses can be found in human behavior and in world mythology. If we don't reject them, we can look deeper, like at the Egyptian Isis or the Greek Hygieia. Even prehistoric images, uh, Maria Gambuda says archeological images are not mute. The nurse is represented in water, nourishment, regeneration, transformation, the bird and snake. Metaphor, metaphors are tools for what's below the surface. In the Victorian era, Dickens portrayed Sarah Gamp as a nurse who actually represented a real nurse of that time in the 1840s unsophisticated working class and drunk most of the time. Thank goodness for Florence Nightingale who came around the same time. So if we look archetypally without moralizing and sorting the good from the bad, we keep the vitality of the image, like the Roman charity. This is an image that goes back before the common era. And it shows the nurses faithful to the old dying man. If it was a mother, she would be faithful to the baby, but she's faithful to the old dying man. And we can see this, it's symbolic. We see it in the Grapes of Wrath, and that's pretty, pretty recent. Then if you look at some of these pre-code Hollywood movies, The Night Nurse from 1931 um, showed a woman as the lead, showed the nurse as moral leader with a nose for hypocrisy, the raw nature of nursing. She has street smarts, there's a sisterhood, and bureaucracy. 
And then we get to some multidimensional nurses today, especially if you look at season one through three. Nurse Jackie is amazing. And in Angels in, in America, you look at Belize. They're both doing soul's work, which is messy, peculiar, unpredictable. They're rousers of revelry. They're imperfect and human. And in the English patient, you see uh, Juliet Binoche's character. She does not shy away from her part in the intensely difficult decision and harsh reality of life and death. She affirms life while maintaining an understanding of the brutal frankness and wonder of the life cycle. So if we deny the nurse as angel, we are deprived of her altruism. If we disavow the nurse as witch, we lose her intuition and perception. If we refuse to admit the nurse is sacrificial servant, we forget her ability to tend to others' needs first. If we reject the nurse as erotic, we dismiss her comfort with tending a stranger's body. If we dismiss the nurse as strict matron, we disregard her vigilance and the rage that feeds her ability to protect the vulnerable. A mythological approach shifts us from linear and limited thinking to ambiguous and complex awareness. So archetypes cannot be explained, only experienced, and only within each of our own personal and cultural biases. I hope you've experienced a glimpse of the nurse archetypal energy in these few minutes together. Thank you.